Hey everyone, it's Jenna from Cruise Blog, and today we're taking a full look at MSC Seaside. Let's get into it. MSC Seaside was the first in MSC Seaside class, and it debuted in late 2017. This ship features a modern design with ample ocean views. The ship costs over 700 million to build, and it has a maximum capacity over 5,000 passengers. Today, we're taking a full tour of the ship to look at everything on board, from the pools to the dining venues, bars, and entertainment spaces. Let's get started. We're going to start our ship tour with the pool deck. The pool deck ranges from deck 16 through 20, although there is no deck 17, and it has several pools, lounge areas, bars, and activities. Here's the main pool. As you can see, there are some day beds in addition to a more shallow area and the deeper pool. Now, if you come here on a sea day, it's going to be very busy. And if you want one of those day beds that hang over the pool, you'll want to get there early. There are also several hot tubs on the pool deck. While not huge, these are spacious enough for several guests to enjoy at one time. The pool deck on MSC Seaside is best enjoyed on sunny days in the Caribbean, although if you're sailing in Europe, you'll find ample time to enjoy the pool deck as well. Of course, there are a ton of lounge chairs around the pool deck. Now these are not in the shade, so if you're looking for a shaded chair, we'll get to those later, but this is perfect for sun tanning. And there's a huge TV screen, and in this area, sometimes you'll see games and different dance parties being held. It just depends on the day's activities. Now, as we get more toward the back of the ship, you'll see other hot tubs here as well, and these are often far less crowded than those in the main pool area. Many passengers don't realize these are here, so if you see that the hot tubs are too full in the middle of the ship, head here instead. And you'll also find the Bridge of Size. Now, this is a glass walkway that goes over the ship, and it's slightly scary, but it's a lot of fun to walk on the walkway. And below you, you'll see another pool area. And this back of the ship space is just perfect for watching sail away or just enjoying a nice view. You see a wonderful view of the wake here as you're sailing from port to port. Next to the main big pool is the pool bar. And here is where you can find a variety of cocktails, beers, drinks, and some Venki gelato popsicles. These are so delicious. Now these do cost extra. So if you have a drink package, you can enjoy most drinks without paying anything extra while on board. Now this view we're seeing of the pool deck here is from Miramar Bar, and this bar is one of the best places to catch a nice view of your port or the ocean while sailing. It is a smoking area, but in my experience, it wasn't always used for this, so even though it's a smoking area, it's still a nice place to hang out for all guests. And there's a bar here too, so you can use those drink packages or purchase drinks individually. The seating here at the Miramar Bar is quite comfy, so if you're looking for a more chill place to go other than the main pool bar, this is a nice option. Of all of the outdoor bars on MSC Seaside, this is probably the most scenic just for those sweeping ocean views. Next, we're going to head to the Aqua Park, and this is the place to go if you have kids on MSC Seaside. Here you'll find slides, wading pools, water dump buckets, splashers. It's just a whole lot of fun for kids. And above the pool are these rope courses where you can walk free of charge along this narrow rope course. And this is not for those afraid of heights. This area is open at all hours of the day, so there's no need to wait in line or sign up. If you want to give the ropes course a try, just go up to the deck and walk on the ropes course. I was surprised with how fun the ropes course was and my entire group of varying ages all enjoyed it. This pool area is mostly for kids. It's not exactly the most relaxing spot for adults, so I would recommend going only if you have kids with you. But there is this water slide within the kids' aqua park, and this is great for all ages. Compared to the other water slides on MSC Seaside, it goes relatively slow, and it's perfect for kids or those who aren't really too much of adrenaline seekers. But in this area is also where you'll find the entrances to the other water slides and the zip line. So these other water slides go over the side of the ship. This one here is a raft slide, so you take an inner tube and you go down on the raft. It's all enclosed, so it can be a little claustrophobic, but it goes extremely fast, and I thought it was a lot of fun during my time on board, although the line was a little bit too long sometimes. Now these are racing slides, and these were probably the fastest water slides I've ever experienced. The one on the right is even faster than the one on the left. 
and these have a clear section and go over the side of the ship, so they're not for those afraid of falling into the water. These are probably the best two water slides, in my opinion, on MSC Seaside. The best time to try the water slides on MSC Seaside is on a port day. Even if you go out into port, try the water slides when you come back. Sea days can see long lines. Although the water slides are free, there is a zip line that costs $11 per ride. This is the zip line here and it goes over the pool deck. While it does cost extra, I thought it was a lot of fun when I tried it as you're really flying over to the edge of the ship and you have amazing views of the ocean and ship as you do so. If you're looking for even more sweeping views from the pool deck, come here near the sports court and the zip line entrance. This is one of the best places to go if you want someone to film you going over the zip line as well. MSCC side has a sports court where you can find basketball games and other sports activities throughout the sailing. This is free of charge. Sometimes you'll see free play here and other times it will be more organized activities. Just remember to bring tennis shoes if you're planning to use the sports court as you won't be allowed to use sandals or flip flops. All right, now we're going to go near the aqua park once again, and this is a little play space for younger children. If you're traveling on MSC Seaside with toddlers, this is a great play space for them, and it's always open and free of charge. And there's comfy seating for adults to sit in as their kids are playing in the play place. So you won't have to stay standing there if you just want to make sure that your kids are supervised when they're playing. And since MSC has a partnership with LEGO, you'll find this LEGO photo shoot area and this is a fun place to take pictures. Next up, let's go to the Jungle Pool. Now this was probably my favorite pool on MSC Seaside just because it is an indoor and outdoor pool. It has a retractable roof that will open or close depending on the weather. So this is the roof here and just depending on if it's raining, sunny, cloudy, they will open or close it. And the jungle pool is a little more relaxing I found than the main pool and I appreciate that it can be in the shade as this makes it more comfortable during the day. And there's also a bar here along with a Venki gelato area. If you haven't had Venki gelato before, you have to try it on MSC Seaside. It is so delicious. And the bar can make your classic cruise tropical drinks like pina coladas, strawberry daiquiris, Mai Tais, and they also have beers and non-alcoholic beverages as well. Now the bars can get a little bit crowded, so I would try to aim ordering a drink when the line doesn't look too long. There is a ton of seating in the jungle pool. Again, most of it is in the shade, which is nice for those who would prefer not to get sunburned. And there's also other seating styles too if you're looking to just sit down and hang out as opposed to a standard pool chair. Uh, these green chairs in particular were pretty cool. And there's classic loungers too. Now these chairs looking out toward the ocean are in high demand. Also in the jungle pool area is a foosball table and they also have some other games set up like a little mini golf course sometimes. So if you have kids on board or you just want to play a round of ping pong, this can be a lot of fun. The only downside of the jungle pool is that the pool is quite deep. So most passengers are just hanging on to the side the whole time. All right, if we go up, you can find some more deck space. Now this is a good place to walk around the ship and there's also more hot tubs here. Also in this area is the Top 19 exclusive solarium and this area of the pool deck is only for Aurea guests. So if you did not book an Aurea experience on MSC, you cannot access this space. But this other area of the pool deck up here has some chairs that are available for all cruisers to enjoy. If you're hungry while at the pool, there's the Biscayne Bay Buffet. There are two buffets on MSCC side. This is the smaller buffet, but it offers everything you could need for most circumstances. In the morning, you'll find things like waffles, pancakes, breakfast pizza, fresh pastries, eggs. And for lunch and dinner, you'll find things like a taco making buffet, hot dogs, hamburgers, sandwiches, salad bars. It's just really a nice option for guests who are looking for something quick and convenient. And there's also a little area for kids where the buffet stand is shorter than the rest of the buffet. And here kids can serve themselves without having to stand on their tiptoes. And there's also a dessert stand here. If you're looking for soft serve ice cream, the Biscayne Buffet is where you'll find this too. Every day of the cruise, you can get soft serve ice cream with a toppings bar. And I really enjoy this during my time on board. 
This area is also open for late night snacks. On my cruise, it was open from around 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. So this was popular for those looking for a slice of pizza at night or maybe some French fries. So this is where you would go. And there's a ton of seating at the Biscayne Bay Buffet, both indoors and outdoors. This buffet is often less crowded than the main buffet, which we'll get to later. So if you see that that buffet is just way too crowded, just head upstairs and see what options are waiting for you there. Now in the back of the ship from the pool deck, we can get to these aft elevators that goes to South Beach Pool. So this on deck 16 in the back of the ship, if you take these glass elevators down, you can see some incredible views. And this leads to this pool here, which is called the South Beach Pool. So this is a little shortcut for those who want to try out both pools while on board. The South Beach Pool is one of the most beautiful pools on MSCC side due to these views of the aft. It's right at the aft of the ship on deck seven. So when you're sailing, you can see some incredible views. Now the pool does not go right to the edge of the ship like it does on some of MSC's newer cruise ships, but it's still a big pool space for those who don't really want to be in the hustle and bustle of the main pool deck. Some passengers told me this area was supposed to be for adults only, but this was not the case during our cruise. So your mileage may vary. And there's a lot of seating here too, both in the shade and out of the shade. And in general, for sail away, even if you're not going to the pool, this is a nice spot to go and watch your ship sail away from port. There's a Venki gelato and crepery stand here too. So if you're looking for gelato or one of their famous gelato popsicles or a sweet Nutella crepe, this is where you can go. Of course, Venki does cost extra at any of its locations on the ship. There's also the South Beach Bar too, and just like any other bars on MSC Seaside, you can use your drink package here. I found that the menus at the bars on MSC were quite varied and I enjoyed trying a lot of the different cocktails that maybe I wouldn't think about ordering without looking at the menu. So in general, South Beach Pool is just that classic pool cruise ship vibe that many cruisers are looking for, and I recommend checking this out while on the ship. Okay, let's head inside to the atrium. The atrium is a four deck high open space on MSCC side that is filled with bars, shops, and entertainment. This is the hub of MSCC side and it's where you'll likely find yourself walking through several times throughout the day, every day. Whether you're going to dinner or just walking from one side of the ship to the other or enjoying a drink at one of the many bars or walking on these crystal staircases, you'll likely find yourself in the atrium over and over again. During the daytime, this area is more relaxed, but during the evening, many passengers head here before dinner or they listen to the live music. So let's start with the bottom floor of the atrium. This is deck five. And here you'll find the seaside bar. Now this is the main bar in the atrium. It's in the bottom of the atrium and it's where you can get a classic cocktail or they also have a coffee bar here. So I enjoyed coming here for cappuccinos. And this has a nice proximity to the entertainment, which they play just one deck above. And there's also guest services on deck five too. So if you have any problems while on the ship with your billing or just have a question, the line can occasionally get long. So I would recommend going there when the line does not look very long or else you might find yourself waiting for longer than you would like. And you'll find the photo gallery on deck five too and the internet desk. So if you have any questions on these two items, you can ask them here. The photo gallery is where you'll find pictures that you've taken throughout the week. MSCC side has many photographers on the ship. It does not cost anything extra to get your photo taken, but if you want to order any of these professional photos, you will have to pay extra. And there's also a photography studio. So if you want to book a private studio session, you can head here and ask about the different packages available. Yes, while everyone has cell phones that they take pictures with, there's something special about getting that professional cruise photo to remember your vacation by. All right, let's head up to deck six, and this is the Shine Bar. I loved this bar on MSCC side, mostly because of these ocean windows. These are huge windows that just had some beautiful views when we were sailing. And because there's so much seating as this bar is on both sides of the atrium, I never had much trouble finding a drink. In fact, on formal night, they had bartenders coming around passing out free drinks to everyone. Even though I had a drink package, I loved having this option of just getting a fun little cocktail or champagne based cocktail for free. And this was also a great spot to meet up with friends and family before dinner as it's close to the dining rooms, but it's still a little quieter than if you were waiting at another bar like the seaside bar downstairs. In this area, you'll also find your manager account. So this is where you can put money on your cruise card or check your balance and activate your credit card to match with your cruise card. 
Around here too is MSC Excursions. So if you did not book shore excursions ahead of time, you can come here and ask about the different shore excursion offerings. I recommend booking excursions before you get on the ship as you'll usually find better pricing and you also have more options to book with independent tour companies that are not the cruise ship, but they do have a lot of helpful information here for planning your perfect day in port. And the workers here are really knowledgeable about the different offerings in each port. So if you want to come and ask questions from the professionals who know all about the different tours, this is where you'll go. Let's head one deck upstairs to deck seven. This is the champagne bar. Now I discovered this bar about halfway through my cruise and I loved coming here for the rest of my sailing. Most of the drinks here are champagne based and while the vibe is not as intimate as maybe the shine bar due to the more bright decor, the menu is really interesting. I really enjoyed the blueberry lavender champagne cocktail. It was a unique flavor and something you could not get at other bars on the ship. And there's a ton of seating here too. So this was another great spot to meet up with friends and family before dinner. And at night, this area got a lot more popular as people were getting their post dinner drinks before a show. Next to the champagne bar is where you'll find MSC Future Cruise. So if you're really enjoying your MSC Seaside Cruise and want to book another MSC sailing, you can talk to the booking experts here and you'll get great offers for booking on board like reduced deposit and greater flexibility. You can also find brochures for all of MSC's cruises here. So if you're looking to sail to the Caribbean or Europe or South America, you can ask questions and learn more about the different offerings. There's also the MSC shop, and this is where you'll come to get different MSC souvenirs, such as t-shirts or keychains and just items to remember your MSC cruise by. Next on deck eight, one deck above, we have Bistro La Boheme. Bistro La Boheme is a French style bar. I believe they might have used to serve food, but now this is not the case. During my cruise, it was just another bar uh, that you could go to and just like the champagne bar, it had its own little vibe. There was also a few activities offered here such as arts and crafts during my cruise. And this was just a lot quieter than the shine bar and champagne bar just because it was on deck eight. So it was a little further from the action on the ship. Also near Bistro La Boheme, there is another excursion desk. This is just another spot you can book those MSC excursions. They may have different opening hours compared to the excursion desk on deck six, or you can just stop by and get a destination guide and learn more about your ports. And next door to this is a different store where you can find jewelry and watches and sunglasses. So that's perfect for those who want to shop. So in general, this is the main area of the atrium. And now we're going to take a look at the different decks that jet out from the atrium as each deck offers more that you can find when you walk past the atrium to the other side of the ship. First, let's start off on deck six with Piazza Grande. Now this is another mini atrium of sorts. This here is where you'll see different entertainment happening in the day. They often have a singer or maybe a piano player here and there's a lot of seating. And this area also is filled with shopping too. And fewer people come here compared to the main atrium, so if you're looking for a quiet place to sit, the Piazza Grande can be a nice option. And one of my favorite areas on board is in the Piazza Grande, which is the main store of Venki Gelato. Venki is one of my favorite Italian gelato companies. I first tried the chain in Italy nearly 10 years ago, and their chocolate and gelato is just exquisite. My favorite flavor is the pistachio or the dark chocolate gelato, and they also have a lot of different truffles here. I highly recommend trying the different pistachio chocolates as that's something Italy is known for. And what's really cool is that they make the chocolates on board. So it's fun to just watch them make the different chocolates. You don't often get to see that on a cruise ship. And their gelato again is just exquisite. It does cost extra. I think most cups were around three to $5 depending on the size, but I think it's one of the best ways you can spend a little bit of extra money on board. While you can find complimentary soft serve ice cream at the Biscayne Bay Buffet, it's nothing like the quality of gelato you'll find at Venki. In addition, they also have different coffee drinks here, but they are not included in your drink package. Also in the Piazza Grande are a variety of different shops. So when you're shopping on a cruise ship, one benefit is that a lot of items are duty free, so you won't pay taxes as you're in international waters. And the shops vary, but usually you'll find a liquor store and you'll get this liquor on your way home, so you won't be able to drink it on the ship. And you'll also find some things like duty free chocolate bars, really what you can find at an airport duty free store you'll find on the ship. 
There's also many clothing stores and purse stores, and these are more designer items, so it's probably not the most budget shopping that you'll find on MSC Seaside, but if you enjoy shopping, by all means, browse the stores. It's something fun to do, even if you don't plan on buying anything, just walking through and seeing what's available on MSC Seaside. Okay, next let's go to the Haven Lounge. So this is on deck seven. So if you leave the atrium on deck seven near the champagne bar, you'll get to the Haven Lounge. And the Haven Lounge is an area that has live music, trivia, just a variety of different events. And I really enjoy this space. It's really big. And the variety of entertainment here during my cruise was just fantastic. Behind the Haven Lounge is the billiard room. So if you're looking to play a game of pool, or just relax there when your friends are playing pool, this is where you'll go. There's also some checkers boards or chess boards here too. So this is another quiet spot on MSC Seaside. Also on deck seven is the Miami Casino where you'll find slot machines, table games, and other ways to gamble like bingo. Then we have arcade games and bowling. So if you are traveling with kids, you will probably be here more than you would like. This area has activities that cost extra, although you can buy some fun passes where you can get the activities at a discount. Famously, MSC Seaside has a bowling alley with two lanes. To reserve this, you'll want to go to the reservations desk in arcade games and bowling and reserve either a half hour or hour session. I recommend doing this right away because slots can fill up quickly but it's a classic game of bowling and how else can you do that on a cruise ship but on MSC? This is the reservation desk where you'll make reservations for all the different options here in arcade games and bowling. There are also a few arcade games where you can get prizes and these cost extra too. And there's an F1 racing simulator. You also have to reserve this, but it's a really cool experience for those who like F1. And there's an XD cinema where they play movies, although each of these movies costs extra. Next to Arcade Games and Bowling is the Garage Club. This is kind of a retro Americana themed bar. And most famously, this is where karaoke is held during the cruise. So if you're someone who enjoys karaoke, give it a shot at the Garage Club. The only weird thing is that the screen faces so that you're not facing the audience, but perhaps that's better for those shy karaoke singers out there. And there's a ton of drinks here too, just like any other bar on the ship. It's kind of a drive-in themed bar and I enjoyed the classic retro colors and it was just a fun place to go watch karaoke during my sailing. All right, the garage club is in the aft of deck seven, but the theater is in the forward area of deck seven. The Metropolitan Theater is where you'll find entertainment during the cruise, such as the Michael Buble tribute or maybe a, an Elvis impersonator or a comedian. They also have bingo held here. So just like any cruise ship theater, you can make reservations for the shows or show up if there's space available. And there's singing and dancing. MSCC side had pretty traditional cruise ship entertainment, but it was still entertaining to watch. And it's just a nice tradition to do after having dinner on a cruise. Okay, let's move one deck up from the theater. Now this is deck eight. This is called the Piazza and it's another shopping and bar district outside of the atrium. So first there are some shops here. This is where you can find some more jewelry. If you're looking to buy a new bracelet or necklace, this is where you'll go. And this walkway has a lot of glass mirrors, so make sure you don't run into the wall because I almost did during my cruise. But this is another little shopping area. So there's pop-up shops that appear here in the middle and there are seats available, really comfy seating. So this, just like the Piazza Grande two decks below where you'll find Venki Gelato, is just another relaxing place to sit a little bit away from the hustle and bustle. And one thing in the evening is that they often have sales. So if you're looking to buy a purse cheaper than you might be able to buy in the store, you can come shopping here at the Piazza and you might find a discount available on maybe a watch or a purse or a perfume. So if you're a shopper, this is maybe another spot to check out other than the shops downstairs. There are two bars, one on each side of the piazza. The first is the sports bar, which is a classic sports bar where you'll find sports decor and sports being shown on the many TVs in this area. It also has really nice windows for looking at the ocean. One thing I really enjoyed about the sports bar, not only were these windows, but the sports bar has these little coves that you can use to watch sports. So these little coves are more private and each of them has a TV. So if you're looking to enjoy a game with your friends and family while on the ship and have a little bit extra privacy, you can grab one of these coves, but they also have a nice big screen for big events happening in the sports world. 
Even if you're not watching sports, you can still come here and sit and enjoy the ocean views and there's some seating outdoors too. And at night, this area gets a lot more popular compared to during the day as people are just looking for a nice drink with some TV screens to watch too. Across from the sports bar is the Sea View Lounge. This is another bar that's shaped similarly. It has those big windows looking outdoors, but this one has some live music available and is just a little bit quieter than the sports bar. So if you don't want to be surrounded by sports, I recommend just walking the 10 steps between these two bars and coming here instead. And you may also find some live music and different meet and greets happening during the day. I think of all the bars on the ship, these two are some of the more relaxing as they're far away from the loudness that you'll find in the main atrium. And of course, in the evening, you can listen to some guitarists or pianists and just enjoy drinks with nice music. Right next door is the spa and fitness area. So if you have a spa treatment or maybe are looking to purchase a pass to the thermal suite or you just want to get a nice workout in, this is where you'll go. So let's take a look at the spa first. We have some salons and then we have the thermal suite and some traditional rooms. So this here is the thermal suite. You can purchase a pass here for the duration of your cruise and you'll find different saunas and steam rooms and even a snow room and hot tubs. Certain loyalty statuses with MSC can get a free hour here during the cruise, so be sure to inquire about that. There's also an outdoor area of the thermal suite too, and this is where you'll find a hot tub and some additional seating. I loved coming here to this hot tub because no one else was here most of the time due to the more exclusive area. But in general, going to the spa is something you can reserve ahead of time or once you get on board, they may have some specials available on certain days. And there's also a salon if you want to get your hair or nails done. In addition, the spa sells some spa products such as perfumes, hair products, skin products, and so make sure to browse these items if you're looking to purchase some extra toiletries while you're on board. And there's nice seating here too where you can wait for your treatment. Next door is the MSC Gym, and this is a big gym. It's not like a small gym you'll find in a hotel. Here you'll find a variety of exercise equipment from treadmills to ellipticals, to weights, to exercise classes, stationary bikes. The gym is free to use, which is highly beneficial for those who don't want to miss out on their workout routine while on the ship. I will say that the gym is not always super busy. It tends to be busier at the start of the cruise, but as the cruise goes on, fewer people go to the gym. So you won't usually have any trouble finding an empty piece of equipment to use. And if you want to pay extra, you can reserve some exercise classes as well, such as spinning. All right, after that workout, you're likely getting pretty hungry. So let's check out Marketplace Buffet, which is the bigger buffet on MSCC side. This is the main buffet and it's where you'll find a wider range of options compared to the buffet on the pool deck. It's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And sometimes the hours are the same, but sometimes they vary from the small buffet upstairs. The pizza is of course, one of the best things to enjoy at the buffet. And there's also a family and kids station and you'll find pasta here and different ethnic foods too. I enjoyed the Indian curries and the Asian stir fries. And there's a huge variety of desserts every day. Again, everything in the buffet is totally free. You can get as much as you want. You can come here as much as you want. I personally came here many times a day for a little slice of pizza for a snack, but there's also of course some healthier options too. And there's fruit and salad bars. MSC is a European cruise line, so they tend to have really fantastic pasta and pizza. So I definitely recommend trying these while on the ship. They make all of their pizza fresh constantly throughout the day. They have breakfast pizza and savory pizza. I enjoyed the pizza margarita and the pizza marinara. Both were really delicious. And there are many free beverages to enjoy here as well, such as waters and juices and iced tea and coffee. But they also have a bar where you can get alcoholic drinks and sodas and beer. There's nice outdoor seating at the buffet too, which is what I really enjoyed about this space. Sometimes I preferred sitting outside, especially in the morning for breakfast, instead of being in the inside, which would be quite crowded. And it was just a nice place to get some fresh air while dining. There's just a ton of seating out here, and this is where you'll see views down to the South Beach pool as well. If you keep walking along this outer deck on deck eight, you'll also find some more glass bridges. So just like the glass bridge at the top of the pool deck, you can walk along these and, and just like above, it's a little bit scary, but it's a lot of fun too. It's a nice area to go for a morning stroll if it's not too hot. The chairs aren't always out here, but this is next to the sports bar and the sea view bar. And as you can see, there's some seating here if you don't want to sit indoors. Speaking of food, let's head to the main dining room. So there are two main dining rooms on MSCC side. One is on deck five and one is on deck six. 
The dining room you're assigned to just depends on the dining time you select. The main dining rooms on MSC Seaside offer a varied menu each night. They're also open for breakfast and dinner and occasionally for lunch. MSC does Italian food really well, so that's what I recommend trying if you want to just try something that's consistently delicious. Although I didn't have one bad meal here. I especially love some of these desserts and the different pastas, whether that was a classic pasta with tomato sauce or maybe a mushroom-based pasta. There's also the classic French onion soup and some salads. And just like at any main dining room on cruise ships, you can order more of one item. So if you want to try five appetizers, three main courses, and two desserts, there's nothing stopping you except maybe the limits of your stomach. You can choose from an early dining time or a late dining time. You can put your preference when you're booking. If you want to change your dining time, just go to the dining room on the first day of your cruise and ask about the different options available. Compared to the buffet, the main dining room on MSCC side offers that classic sit-down dining experience on a cruise ship. But if you want to try specialty dining, you can come to this area on deck 16, which is the hub for specialty dining on MSC Seaside. There are three restaurants here in addition to a bar where you can get a drink before you dine. This bar is great if you just want to show up a little bit early before your specialty dining reservation. They also have some different drinks here that you can't find on other bars around the ship. So I recommend coming about a half hour or 45 minutes before your dining time to check out the cocktail menu. There are three specialty restaurants in this area and all of them cost extra. They also have packages available if you want to try more than one restaurant. This here is the Ocean K restaurant, which is a seafood restaurant. Here you'll find different appetizers like carpaccio and tartare. If you're a seafood lover, you will love coming to Ocean K, but if you are someone who prefers a steakhouse, be sure to try the Butcher's Cut, which is MSC Steakhouse, and you'll find a variety of different red meats here, along with chicken dishes and classic American sides. Then we have Kaito Teppanyaki, which is the sushi and hibachi restaurant on MSC Seaside. This is the most beautiful restaurant I think I saw on the ship. I just think the decor in here is gorgeous. So it makes a nice date night if you're traveling with your spouse or partner. On one side of the restaurant is the sushi bar where you can order a variety of rolls and different soup dishes and noodle dishes. But if you're looking for the hibachi option, you'll have to go on the other side. And the hibachi option is so fun. The hibachi chefs really put on a nice show. It's funny, it's talented. They might even flick pieces of egg for you to catch in your mouth. And there are so many courses at this meal from miso soup to sushi to fried rice to hibachi vegetables, meat, dessert. I just felt like the courses kept coming and it was really impressive and I thought the price was quite reasonable. It's around $40 for the meal and I found the quality to be really great and it was probably the best meal I had on MSCC side. All right, now that we've looked at the restaurants and all around the ship, let's go to the cabins. So there are staterooms all over MSCC side. This is an interior cabin, the cheapest option available. While it's nothing fancy and doesn't have a balcony, I found it to be a nice place to call home for the week. I thought the decor was quite nice and modern and the bed was extremely comfy as well. Now your stateroom is serviced twice a day on MSCC side, so you'll have a stateroom attendant that comes in in the morning and also in the evening. And there's a lot of storage here too. It wasn't the most spacious cabin I've ever stayed in, of course, because it was so small and there wasn't a couch or any comfortable chair, but I overall have no huge complaints about this stateroom. I found it to be a nice place to go. All right, so there are a few areas I was unable to film on the ship just based on how I booked this cruise. So the first is the MSC Yacht Club. If you're staying in a Yacht Club cabin, which are the most exclusive cabins on MSC, you have access to this exclusive area, which has its own restaurant, pool area, sun deck, lounge, and concierge service, as well as priority boarding. The Yacht Club is one of the most ship within a ship concepts you'll find in the cruise industry, so I would recommend looking at options if you have a little higher budget for your vacation. Next is Doremi Land, and that is the kids club on MSCC side. If you're traveling with kids, they can enjoy complimentary kids programming. There is childcare for toddlers up to teenagers on the ship. Because MSC has a partnership with Lego, you may find some Lego specific events as well. And that's a whole lot of fun for kids of all ages. So there you have it. That is our full ship tour of MSC Seaside. Overall, I had a fantastic week on this ship. I was impressed with the design of the ship, the food options, the pools, and it was just a nice value for a family vacation. If you're planning a cruise on MSC Seaside soon, let me know what you're most excited for about this cruise ship. Until next time, happy cruising.